All right, so today we are going to make a player trigger or a trigger area that a player can walk into to turn something on and then walk back out to turn something off again. You can obviously use this for mirrors, signs, doors, lights, whatever you want. But we're going to be using it to toggle the controls that I set up last time for the bloom slider. So you won't be able to control the slider from any distance possible off in the, the infinite and beyond. Obviously we need to set up the trigger first. So I'm just going to make a new empty object there, add a box collider and resize it to be 333. Three, three. I found is pretty good for this one. Set it up to take up the space I want. And now we need to set up the rest of this. Since it's a box collider, we need to set it to be trigger because otherwise it's just a big wall you're gonna hit. We'll do add component to do a rigid body and set is kinematic. You pretty much want rigid bodies if any kind of interaction is happening with a collider. And I'm setting to be is kinematic because there's not going to be any physics happening. It's not going to be falling or bounced around. We just want it to stay absolutely still. The last part, which a lot of people tend to miss, is we need to set this trigger to be on the layer mirror reflection. Now it isn't immediately obvious, but mirror reflection is the only layer that doesn't block the user's hand when they are ray casting to interact with something like a, a button or picking up an object or anything like that. So if you've ever tried to do any of those things and were confused by why you couldn't at the time, it's likely because there was a big trigger area that you're inside of that wasn't set to mirror reflection. And this is realistically the only way to get around that. Since this trigger is going to be toggling the UI, I'm going to rename this to UI trigger. And now we can go and set up our graph. So right click, create VR chat, Udon, Udon graph program asset. And I'm just gonna call this player trigger. And we'll add this to our object by add component Udon behavior and drag it right in here. We don't want anything to be synced with this since it's just a local toggle. So we're safe to set continuous over to none so that there's no network traffic for the script whatsoever. Next, we can hit open Udon graph. And the first thing that we need is the actual thing that we're turning on and off, which will be a game object for the canvas. With that, we'll need a new game object variable. So plus and type game object. And I'm gonna rename this to target to make it really obvious. Set it to be a public and hit compile. So that shows up in the inspector. And I'm going to drag my post-processing canvas into this slot right here so that we can reference it through our script. Now we want this to happen when the player walks into the trigger or comes back out of the trigger. So we're gonna start with the event on player trigger enter. Now this happens for every single player, not just you. So we're going to want to filter it by one players that exist and two players that are local, meaning just you. What I mean by exist is some people can have like colliders or stuff on their avatar. And depending on what kind of stuff they're doing, it might break certain things. So the way that we get around that is just by checking to see if the player that is triggering this is valid. And we can just drag out from player, which is the reference to that player, and type is valid. And then if this is true, we can actually go and do things. I'll link this up here to our event, and then we'll drag out from bool to see if it's true and have a branch for that. So type branch, which is just a true false statement. Uh, plug that in there, and we'll do the rest of our script through the true. So similarly to how we just did this, we're going to get is local instead of is valid. So drag out from here and type is local. And we'll just do the same thing where we'll get another branch, branch, and plug that into the true because we want is valid to be true. And there we go. Now we want to do our toggling inside of the true value of our branch. So we'll get a reference to our target, drag out from there and type set active. And then we'll just plug that in up here to true and check this so it is active. So when we locally walk into this trigger, we check to make sure that we exist, and then we check to make sure that we're local, and then we set it to be active. Now let's do this for exiting as well, so we can turn this object back off again. Easily enough, that's on on player trigger exit. And then we can just copy essentially the whole thing that we did up here with some minor alterations. First, we have to plug in the actual event itself. Then we have to plug in the references to the player. 
So make sure that goes into is valid as well as the get is local down here. And lastly, we want to actually uncheck this so that it's setting it to be false when we step out of it. I'm going to hit compile and then play so we can test here in CyanMU to make sure this works. All right, here in CyanMU, I can step up to it, interact with it a bit, and then step back away and it'll turn off whenever I come in or out of this trigger. And if you want, we can see this trigger by checking the gizmos button up here. So we can see all the different things that you normally only see in the scene. So whenever I'm inside of this box, it'll turn it on and off. However, you probably noticed that when we hit play, it was on by default. That's because we've had it on in our scene and nothing told it to change. So since we wanted to actually be off by default, we're going to go back into our graph and do something in the start event, which is basically at the beginning of everything. So we'll type start. And for this, I'll actually just steal the nodes that we made down here for exiting and plug it up here for start. That way, at the beginning of everything, it just turns the object off. Hit compile and then play again, and then you'll see that it'll be off by default. All right, look to the right, it's no longer on, but if I come up to it, it enables it. Hooray! This will work in VRChat as well, but let's quick set it up in Udon Sharp before we test it there. For Udon Sharp, we're going to want to right click and do create U Sharp script. I'm going to call this player trigger sharp, just so there isn't a naming conflict for me because I'm doing graphs and Udon Sharp. And then when that's done compiling, we'll go and replace that on our UI trigger object. Remove this one, and then we can actually just drag the C sharp script onto here and press convert to Udon behavior. We again don't want this to be networked, so we'll set continuous to be none. Then we double click our C sharp script to open up the code. Here I have it in Visual Studio, and let's just set it up so it's in a namespace first. I talked about this in the last video, but basically namespaces make your code locked to a certain group so that it doesn't conflict with other people's code. I'm just going to call this namespace Valgen, then have open and closed brackets encompassing the entire script. Now let's full screen our Udon graph here so we can look at exactly what's happening here and basically copy it over to C sharp. First, we need our public game object variable called target. So I'll just have a public game object target, semicolon n. So let's just start with our start event. We'll do start autofills to private void start. And we just want to set our target to be inactive. So target.set active parentheses false, semicolon to end the line. And now we can go over to the VR chat events on player trigger enter and exit. Since these are VR chat events, we need to use what's called an override. So if we just type override, we should be able to get on player trigger enter to autofill. Delete the base on player trigger enter because we don't need that. And we're going to want to do the same checks that we did here for valid and local. So if player dot is valid and is valid is a function. So you need parentheses at the end of it brackets for if it's true, we can go in here and do if player dot is local brackets again. And then we can set it right here, target.setActive true. Now we can move on to our on player trigger exit, but I'll actually use this to show you how you can shorten some of this code. Again, both of these ways will work perfectly fine. Just use what you're comfortable with, but we'll be able to show how you can shorten this to be a lot fewer lines of code you need to write. Again, I'll do override on player trigger exit. Clear that line we don't need. And we'll do if exclamation point player dot is valid. We can do return at the end of this and that cuts it. Nothing beyond this is going to happen if the player is not valid. Same thing goes for is local. We can do if exclamation point player dot is local return. So if they're not local, just quit. Don't do anything beyond this. But we can also combine these into one line. So we can check to see if the player is not valid or an or is done with two horizontal lines. We do if the player is not local with the exclamation point. So we can put both of those into one line. Then we can just do target dot set active false. And there you go. That's the same code there. Just shortened down to one line essentially. Again, both of these work is just entirely up to your preference. Control S to save and let's head back into Unity. On our UI trigger object, we need to make sure we actually put the canvas back in here. So drag this over here, 
And there you go. Control S to save, and I'm gonna start this immediately into VR Chat because I, I know it works. So I'll hit build and test, and we'll show you it there. All right, now that we're loaded in, we can look around and it's not active by default. But if we step in, it turns on. We can hold tab to use the UI easy. And you see it will turn off again when we step away. So it works perfectly fine. I hope you found this useful.